Welcome back to Asia Tonight. More now on one of our top stories this evening. China preparing to mark its 70th anniversary tomorrow. The centerpiece is a grand military parade with proceedings to last most of the day. And it's widely seen as a chance for Beijing to showcase its military might to the world. Two experts join us now to share their insights. We have Dr. Lim Tai Wei in studio with us. He's an associate professor at the Singapore University of Social Sciences and is also an adjunct research fellow at the East Asian Institute of NUS. And Adam Ni, nee, he joins us from Berlin. He's a researcher at Macquarie University and specializes in all things China. Yes, we're glad to have you both with us and lots of anticipation over tomorrow. I'd like to get both your thoughts actually on what China is trying to achieve with such elaborate uh, celebrations. Uh, Taiwei, we'll get your thoughts first. I think it's going to be a showcase uh, of their achievements. Uh, of course, the uh, so-called uh, crown jewels will probably be the uh, military uh, parade, mm. where it is said that uh, they will probably show off uh, their latest uh, technologies, uh, weaponry, uh, and it's going, it's, it's, it is said to be very impressive, and it's probably for both uh, domestic and uh, international audience to show the capabilities that they have. Mm. Uh, China, uh, 70 years on, has become a uh, technological power, and uh, some of its uh, technological capabilities have been put into uh, military uh, industrial uh, uh, applications, and so some of which will be uh, shown in the military uh, parade. And also there is a kind of a projection of unity uh, in, in face of uh, the uh, past achievements and also the future challenges uh, that uh, they may have. So it's also a parade symbolically uh, of uh, unity. Uh, China is a, uh, just like many other Northeast Asian uh, cultures, is high context culture. Mm. So uh, symbolisms are very important. Uh, some messages may not be uh, sort of, sort of uh, projected directly. It may be uh, you know, through the use of symbols to indirectly show uh, uh, China about the, the um, ideas of unity and strength. Mm. Adam, these preparations are still underway. We anticipate that these celebrations are going to be unprecedented in scale. Uh, join us now in on the conversation here. Purely symbolic here, what else will, will China be trying to send in terms of its message to the rest of the world? Yeah, absolutely. As, um, as Taiwei pointed out, there'll be a prominent display of military gear that will be sending a strategic message about China's uh, military modernization as well as its technological prowess. But I think overall the parade will be um, celebrating the achievements really of the last 70 years of the PRC. And uh, the, the story that the Communist Party want to tell is a really quite simple one and that is over the last 70 years since the establishment of the PRC, the CCP has led the Chinese people to rise and stand up. And today, China is one of the most powerful countries in the world. And on the sheet, China is finally on the cusp of achieving national rejuvenation. The road ahead would be difficult, but time for greatness is imminent. So I think what the party is trying to do is try to rally support for, um, for the myriad of challenges that it faces internally and externally. And this is certainly a sanitization of uh, the history of the PRC that will be on display um, tomorrow. One of the challenges that it's sort of facing, I suppose you could debate whether it's an internal or external uh, challenge, is what's been going on in Hong Kong, all the unrest there. Uh, Adam, I want to get your thoughts on how, how this will play out. I mean, it can't be, I suppose, it's not such a big story from within China, perhaps, as it is sort of to us on sort of the international sort of stage looking into China. Yeah, absolutely. I think the crisis that's currently unfolding in Hong Kong um, challenges uh, CCP legitimacy um, and I think has a shock Beijing because it wasn't anticipated. And really there's no uh, resolution in sight at the moment given the hardening of position on both sides, on the side of the protesters, um, as well as Beijing. I think at the heart of this is a con key contradiction between Beijing's drive to tighten control and integrate Hong Kong uh, into mainland China. And on the other, high, other side, Hong Kong is a desperate effort to fend off Beijing's encroachment. So I think what we have to remember is that uh, Beijing has been actively undermining the one country, two systems framework for at least a decade by tightening control of Hong Kong's political system. And what we're witnessing today is largely the fruit of Beijing's sowing. So, um, you know, to, today's hardline uh, tactics by Beijing is also sowing future resentment. So in effect, I think Beijing is creating a long-term Hong Kong challenge for itself. 
Tai Wei, after many decades of consolidated central authority since 1949 in China, there's this sense of perhaps renewed confidence within China, within its central authority. What kind of world player is China going to be, emerge as now that we're looking at it as you know, taking over the United States even in terms of its economic prowess? I think uh, you can see that uh, from uh, 79, uh, 78, 79 onwards, when it uh, embarked on uh, economic uh, reforms, uh, it has uh, sort of achieved uh, poverty uh, alleviation at uh, quite, a, quite a grand uh, scale. And so uh, some uh, say that uh, it might become a uh, you know, model of development for certain countries uh, based on uh, the, some of the features, successful features that they have. Uh, of course, uh, in the coming years, uh, uh, there will be uh, challenges. And, uh, but uh, China hopes to, uh, as, at least through its uh, Belt and Road Initiative, try to mm. promote connectivity uh, in uh, countries that need uh, transportation infrastructure, communication infrastructure. It remains to be seen uh, whether uh, the uh, full uh, success uh, of the BRI uh, can be attained, but it's uh, trying to make an effort in this sense. Now, uh, what is newer than the fact that uh, it has uh, economic, uh, you know, uh, achieved uh, some level of uh, poverty alleviation is the fact that it has become uh, a, a technological uh, a power. Uh, you can see that uh, in Industry 4.0 technology, uh, some of its companies uh, have become uh, sort of uh, very prominent uh, in the global circle. Uh, they include the likes of what uh, is normally uh, nicknamed as a BAT. Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, which are very prominent in social media, e-commerce, and even uh, e-commerce banking. Uh, so, uh, and in some ways, in some areas, they're actually leading uh, technologies in the world. So how will they use these technological capabilities is something that many in the, wo in the world will watch uh, very carefully. Uh, some may benefit from it uh, using uh, the systems or technologies that they have. Others may consider it uh, a technological rival and so uh, may want to uh, circumscribe or at least uh, compete uh, with such uh, technology. So it's going to be a, sort of a different response or reaction from different uh, stakeholders uh, in this uh, technological game uh, uh, that has arisen. Uh, after all, uh, in the uh, famous words of uh, one of the leading technologists in China, uh, he said, uh, data is the new oil. Mm. So we can expect uh, a lot of uh, competition in that sense. And technological arena is something that uh, probably will be a, a new uh, game that will be played uh, where there are many stakeholders involved. Well, the technological arena is one area that has actually caused or kicked off the friction uh, with the US uh, with regards to sort of Huawei and the, and the, the movements into sort of 5G technology. Uh, Adam, I wanted to get your thoughts on that with the conflict that China has with the U.S. Uh, now that the after the celebrations are sort of over and done and dusted tomorrow, you know they can mark their 70th anniversary. Do you see them returning to the table with the U.S. or do you think they will be a bit more bullish, perhaps? Yes. Yeah, so I think the technological competition between uh, U.S. China and the trade war, they're just symptoms of deeper trends towards uh, competition, towards strategic competition between the two um, biggest powers of the world. So um, these are symptoms rather than uh, causes of, uh, of competition. And certainly I think, um, you know, the days of optimistic and simplistic engagement is, is gone. Right. So uh, and great power competition has returned with a vengeance. And I think it's here to stay for the long term, regardless of whether we um, whether China and the U.S. can arrive at some um, some temporary uh, compromise with regards to their trade war. Um, so I think this is going to be a, a long term feature of uh, our, our regional and global order. All right. Let, let's talk a little bit about uh, you know that you know China in that in that vein looking forward in the next 10 years or so uh, where do you see the country in that time frame well uh, the country has many uh, domestic uh, challenges to uh, manage uh, we can see that in the last uh, five to ten years it has focused on uh, combating pollution uh, you have seen that they have uh, moved uh, some of the industries from the capital city to a smaller city, Xiong'an, in order to uh, sort of alleviate uh, the uh, pollution uh, 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 challenges uh, in the capital city itself, to have blue skies. 
Uh, there are also uh, challenges, uh, domestic challenges that they have to handle. A uh, growing uh, income gap, uh, for example. Uh, these are formidable challenges because they are directly linked uh, to a social economic uh, order and stability. Mm. And so this will be uh, on, on very, high, very much high, high up on their agenda. And of course, uh, with the uh, Belt and Road Initiative, they also, wants to, they also want to push uh, foreign uh, uh, economic diplomacy uh, overseas uh, to, make it, uh, to try to make it uh, sustainable. At the same time, uh, they have to, as, as a rising power, uh, with a great uh, you know, technological capabilities, they also have to handle relations with other major powers uh, that will become increasingly uh, prominent uh, over uh, the next uh, decade or so. So uh, some expect them to uh, show uh, global leadership. Others expect them to uh, you know, um, follow uh, certain uh, international norms. And yet others look at them as a developmental model and uh, also uh, other stakeholders uh, want them to be a sustainable uh, engine of growth. So it's a very complex uh, set of uh, you know, uh, wish lists from uh, small, medium-sized countries to uh, major powers. So there's going to be a lot of responsibilities uh, for them to uh, assume while mm. they try to uh, resolve uh, domestic uh, issue. It's not going to be easy. Uh, it's going to be a very delicate uh, balance uh, to uh, achieve especially with uh, uh, allocation of uh, resources. Mm. Yeah, certainly uh, we tend to think of... Uh, Adam, I'd like to get your take on that in terms of uh, the fact that, you know, we sort of look at China in terms of its central authority, but we have to remember that China is, has also been a model for economic liberalization as well as structural reform. Where do you see it going in, in a decade? More of the same? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Uh, well, um, I'll just add to um, Wei Tai's excellent points about China's, China's myriad of challenges um, by pointing out that, uh, you know, since the, since the rise of Xi to power, we've seen an effective consolidation of power. Um, on the one man, the, the emphasis on rebuilding the party infrastructure and the reassertion of the party state control in many areas of Chinese economic and social life um, that was relatively liberal on the, on the uh, previous administration. So we certainly see China um, going towards more of a state-involved uh, uh, model. Um, and it's just anybody's guess uh, where that will lead. But certainly, I think China's political order, its hybrid economy and social stability are, I think, far more brittle than many of us assume. Adam, thank you very much for sharing uh, this evening with us and, and joining us in, in this discussion. We've been speaking there to uh, Dr. Lim Taiwei here in the studio with us, Associate Professor at the Singapore University of Social Sciences, as well as Adam Nee over there in Berlin. He is a researcher at Macquarie University. He also specializes in all things China.